Hello, and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guest is someone who I admire so much, has such a great spirit about him. AJ Mita, thank you so much for being a part of the show and welcome to the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. You and I have gotten to know each other probably in the last year or so, and I got to tell you, you impressed me so much. You have built an amazing organization for yourself and your network. And but those, you know, I've heard you say these stories and we're going to sort of like jump into them. (laughs) You know, you tell me the story of like early on in your early years, you were like rookie of the year and you were selling six homes. And I've heard you tell this story, but you were like flat broke. What were those early years like? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, like you said, I got rookie of the year my first year from selling six homes and basically making no money after expenses and the money I was spending on lead generation and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it it was it was tough, but yeah. I had hope that eventually I'd be successful in real estate. And then what I found was I was trying a lot of different things as an agent. I was dabbling in a lot of different lead generation strategies, and it wasn't really until I invested in myself on a credit card, flew out to Las Vegas for a coaching conference, hired a coach on a credit card. I I couldn't afford any of it, but I was all in is when I learned there was a proven blueprint to being successful in real estate. And from that point forward, I just followed that blueprint until I was able to master that and then add other things to my business. So yeah, first year, six houses, you know, I've, I've mentioned before sitting in that conference, I realized listening to the speaker, the coaches, seeing all the successful people, I actually had a hole in my shoe. It, it was, Jesus. it was that I was that unsuccessful as an agent at that point. You know, fast forward a year later, I had. Um, but wait, I don't want you to fast forward just yet. Okay. I want to stay there because <laughs> first of all, you're sort of, you're going through right the first year rookie of the year, which is fantastic, and then you realize I didn't make any money on this, but. Yeah. What in your head sort of said, I'm going to be successful because you've said the story that, you know, your wife is a nurse. She was working double shifts. She was working 14, 16 hour shifts. I mean, this is, there's a lot more to the story. At what point do you sort of say, yeah, I still believe in this because yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot, AJ. Where, yeah. where did that come from? Yeah, you know, I, th- I think the, the way I was raised, I saw a lot of what I didn't want my life to look like, um, mm. primarily financially speaking. Yeah, I, I saw I saw a lot of issues that that come from not having money, arguments that can arise from from lack of financial resources. Yeah. I saw things that 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 I didn't have that I, I may have liked for my family and my my future kids. So for, for me, it was never a question of whether or not I was going to be successful in real estate because I, I had other I had done other business things. Some were successful and some were failures. But I knew that real estate was ultimately what I wanted to be doing in my life. I, I wanted to build a real estate business and eventually invest in real estate for residual income is, is, is the way I thought I was going to earn residual income. Yeah. And I just knew this was it. And um, so I had I had faith that it was going to work out. I think that comes from your upbringing, but also how are you investing yourself? I, I was l- reading books. I was listening to podcasts. I started to surround myself with people who were like-minded. So all of those things gave me hope that I could continue. Had I been on an island by myself, not investing in myself, not continuing to learn and listen to motivational stuff, yeah. uh, I probably would have quit. So so now, now you're at this conference, you look down, you realize that you have holes in your shoes and you're thinking, okay, now that's going to be the shift. Cause I've heard you tell this story and that was the shift for you. And then you yeah. actually put your coaching money on a credit card where you had already overextended. But that was a shift that happened in your psyche at that moment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've seen you even get emotional as you tell the story and you've got you you have such an amazing spirit, AJ. You know, yeah. you you're so you're so there, you're so vulnerable, which is what makes people sort of be so approachable with you and how you built this amazing organization now. But now you're there. Now you're doing the coaching. What happened then? How yeah. did it shift? 
Because there's so yeah. many people that are probably right there with you now, <laughs> which is where you were before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it starts with going all in. Like you, you, like you just described, I was overextended. Like I was all in. And it's so funny when I, when I talk to agents that are where I was and they're like, well, I have no money to invest in this tool that they need for their real estate business or this lead source or whatever it is. And, and I'm thinking in my head, like, what do you have? And sometimes I'll say this to him. I was like, what do you have that you can sell? Like, I, I remember selling my mountain bike, which was probably the only thing, you know, as, as like a material thing that I had at the time that I valued, you know, I enjoyed mountain biking and I still do. I have a really nice mountain bike now. Yeah. I'm but sure I you made up it. for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I sold it because I needed money to keep me going in real estate, you know? And um, so I was all in. So I think it starts with having that mindset, like I'm going all in, I'm burning the bridges, there is no going back, this is my one shot at success. And when you have that mindset, you you approach each day a little bit differently. So once I had a coach, it was still up to me to do everything. But but I, I at that point knew, because I saw everyone else at that conference, like they're all doing the same thing to get to this path, which at the time was just like, for me, it was just to make over six figures a year in real estate. And what that coaching company had was a very cool blueprint to do that, to make multiple six figures in real estate, eventually a million dollars in real estate. But what it was missing was, how do you also have a great quality of life? How do you truly enjoy life? That was all about grinding. And my goal was always to grind as long as I had to, to where I could eventually enjoy my life. And so... So yeah, so I just started following the model by the end of my first year after showing up at the office consistently at 8 a.m. The office was my bedroom for a while or my, right. my, my, my third bedroom that had a desk on boxes so it could be a stand-up desk yep. in, in my gym shorts and t-shirt. That was my prospecting station. <laughs> it, it was showing up every day at eight o'clock no matter what. Like I was there, I would be dialing a prospect at eight o'clock, eight to 11 every day. And I did that consistently for a good two years. Um, so by doing that, I, that, that summer, so July, I was basically a failing agent. Six months later, by the end of that year, I had over 20 active listings. And my second year sold 36 houses as an individual and uh, made close to $200,000. And I uh, was able to help my wife go from being a part-time nurse. She was working you know, midnights as a nurse, yep. ICU, you know, 16 hour days, just she loved what she did because she loved serving people, but working midnights, yeah. 16 hour days where people are dying, that is hard work. Yeah, it is. Uh, she, yeah she, she was, I was able to part time retire her from that. So she went part time, became an admin for me by the end of that second year, and eventually ended up quitting nursing and became a, a buyer's agent uh, for, for our team. And so tell people about the success now because it's important to know where the journey has taken you as we yeah. continue these questions. Yeah, so so as I got into it, I was um, I, I finally got to the point a few years in where I was selling close to 100 homes a year with, my, with a small team, pretty lean, making a couple hundred grand a year. Life was good, but as, as I took a step back, what I realized was I was just on a fancier hamster wheel. You know, like before I was on a hamster wheel just, just trying to make it, but now I just had this this, this fancy hamster wheel I had, you know, I had a slightly used Range Rover. I, yeah. I could take a handful of vacations a year, but it's like, if I got off that hamster wheel for a second, like it would all fall apart. And, yeah. and when I was on vacation, I, I was, you know, constantly having to deal with business back home. So I never had that presence, you know, I, I'm, I, presence to me is so important where I'm at a, just at a park with my family and I'm not receiving phone calls. Like that's yeah. a big deal to me. And so I, I, I recognized that was missing. So when a new opportunity was presented, I, I took advantage of it. And, and now in, in my life and business, I, I have basically a real estate organization that sells over 1,500 homes a month. It's over wow. 4,000 agents internationally. And it runs whether or not I show up. Yep. I can be fully present with my family. And that is still running because of the model, the platform in which I chose to partner with. And it's just been the biggest blessing and and uh, one of the things I'm most grateful for. That is extraordinary to sort of think about that. So the coaching paid off. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it kept me afloat. And it, what it did is it built a strong foundation to my real estate business and yep. taught me some very valuable skills and a very strong work ethic. 
And then you've also become now the coach. So yeah. the student became the teacher. Yeah. And so how do you sort of now take it from that perspective, knowing where you started from? How is your coaching style? Tell me how that was, because that's an interesting perspective that you arrived to coaching and now you're giving back. Yeah, that's an interesting question. No one's ever asked me that. I, I love that question. You know, I, I think what I try to do when, when speaking with anybody, whether it's a, a formal business relationship or they choose to partner with me or, or yeah. in the past, if they hired me as a coach, I, I always want to speak to where they could be mm. and and give them hope of what a better life could look like essentially try to impart some of the vision that I had for my life in, into theirs. Cause I find that a lot of people are, are not going to put in the hard work if they don't have a big vision for their life or, or if they don't understand why they're doing it. Cause at the end of the day, real estate sales is very simple. Success yeah. is simple. Most people, if they've been, if they've watched a couple of YouTube videos, they know <laughs> what they should be doing, but they're not because it's simple, but it is hard. And when you don't have a big enough why, if you don't have a vision for your life, you know, it's like, you know, without a vision, the people will perish. We, we've heard that before. It's it's true. So I, I try to help them really understand, you know, what they want out of life. You know, at the end of the day, 10 years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, when they get to the top of that mountain, what do they want their life to look like? Because to me, the greatest failure would be to just be climbing the mountain. You know, that's your career. You're just climbing this mountain with no purpose, no direction, no vision to get to the top and be like, wow, this isn't even where I wanted to end up. And that's yeah. exactly where you're going to end up when you don't have a vision. It's like five years from now, everyone listening to this is going to arrive. The question is, are you going to arrive where you would have liked to arrive had you put a little bit of thought into it? Or are you just yep. going to arrive where the river took you? I always sort of say success is a bath problem right? You can work something out and work it out backwards and you can figure out how to get there. But to your point, you have to know where you want to arrive. Otherwise, where are you going to go, right? And so yeah. now you start talking about somebody's why, right? And, I, and I've heard you speak so passionately about your beautiful family, and I'm sure that that's part of what your why is. How do you help other people find their why? Yeah. So it's, it's a really simple exercise and, you know, I'm lucky in the fact that I enjoy um, thinking about the future. I, I think <laughs> some people maybe really don't, or they're just not naturally inclined to, but for whatever yeah. reason, one of my favorite things is going to a coffee shop and thinking about what the future could look like. And when I was dead broke, that was my favorite thing to do because my current circumstance wasn't really that ideal, at least financially. <laughs> so like, it's, it's really just taking a half hour or an hour going somewhere quiet, park bench, cafe, whatever, wh whatever causes you to, you know, have some peace in what you're doing, some clear thoughts. Maybe you exercise a little bit beforehand. So you're, you're more in an elevated state as opposed to if, to, if you just got off the couch from watching TV to do it, you know, you want to, it's, it's, it's best if you feel like your best self as you're visiting your future, you're probably going to get better results. And so I just recommend they, they, they get quiet. They think about what do they want their future to look like? So write out what you want your ideal day to look like and not your ideal, you know, you're, you're in, you know, Europe traveling from cafe to cafe. Yeah. It's good to have that vision too, but what does like sure. your average I ideal day look like? Cause most days are going to be your average day. And I just want them to get so descriptive of what that looks like when, when they, when they get home, like what kind of car are they pulling up to their house? in? you know, is it, is it a new Mercedes G wagon or, you know, a Lamborghini, or is it, is it a Ford F-150, you know, whatever they like when, when you open that front door, what are the smells, you know, is, is there, is there cookies being cooked or is it a, is it the sounds of a blender for, you know, for a green smoothie? Like are, <laughs> are there kids running around, you know, can you see out to the ocean? Do you, do you feel a breeze coming off the ocean getting really descriptive? So as you're writing it, you know, it's really good if you're getting goosebumps as you're writing it, you know, maybe you could even, if you get teared up, it's really good. And, yeah. uh, and when you feel it emotionally, it's, it's like, it's already happened. You just having you know, been there yet. And after you do that, if you can share it with someone important to you in life, whether it's a spouse, a friend, if, if you don't have a significant other, it, it really helps. It, it helps to share it with somebody. 
And if it's somebody that is close enough to you where they're on the journey with you and yeah. you can participate in that together, it's really good. So, so I always recommend starting there or then you can get a little more complicated with goal setting, but, but that's just, that's just casting the vision very simply. So is this the process when you say we have to learn how to dream again? Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, it's so funny as kids, it's like, you know, you meet a kid, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's like yeah. president of the United States, <laughs> NBA basketball player. <laughs> and like, and as adults, we encourage that. It's like, oh yeah, Susie, you're no, no yeah. doubt you're going to be the president of the United States. So then it's like, <laughs> they go to college and it's like, you know, I think an architect would be better for you. Like, <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, that's the society that we're in. And, um, yeah. you know, it's just unfortunate that we're, we're conditioned to eventually stop dreaming, stop going after what we had once hoped when we were kids. And, and uh, you know, that's just life, you know, and, and I think most people listening to this are probably in a place where, where they stop dreaming a little bit, um, regardless sure. of how successful they are. You know, yeah. I've, I've dealt with this even recently. and. Um, you know, we, we all got to just dream, dream, keep dreaming, start dreaming. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun when you, when you carve out the time, you know, it's, it's just crazy, Michael, that some people spend more time planning their vacations than they do their life. It's so true. It is so yeah. true. And it's scary, isn't it? It's sort of like when you start thinking about that, it is so true. And yeah. when people are really not having any sort of planning for their own future, for their own careers, that is scary. Yeah. What's the greatest lesson you've learned so far in your career? Yeah, you know that's that's a that's a really that's the that's the core question to everything. I think it's like, you know, what are the lessons that someone has learned to get to where they are? And and for me, it always goes back to just being consistent and and having faith. Like that's been the key to my success in in business is is being consistent. And having faith, because sometimes you can be consistent with something, but you don't get the results that you were hoping for. Yep. And that's when the faith kicks in to get you through those those low points. But but also being consistent with the right activities. That's why having a good coach or mentor is crucial, because you can be consistent doing the wrong things and not get the result that you're looking for. So assuming that you know you've you've watched the correct trainings online, you're 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 with the right brokerage, you have a mentor, you have a coach, and, and you've identified the key activities, and it's usually just one or two things in real estate that you should be focused on to, to, to prospect, to lead generate, to generate business. Once you identify those right activities, it's just doing it consistently and never quitting until it works because it eventually will work when yeah. you do it with consistency, with focused intensity. Uh, and not just go through the motions with it. So, so just being consistent and having faith. I love that, you know, and, and faith is a big part of your life, isn't it? Yeah. It, it yeah, really definitely. resonates. Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the things that we were talking about a math problem earlier when we we're talking about success with math, and you actually do something really similar. And I've heard you do this too with, with one life living, right? And when you start sort of doing the math of life expectancy, versus quality of life. That's like a harsh mirror that you raise to people. Tell yeah. tell the audience what that is. Yeah, that that one that one makes life a little bit more real. It's like Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> You know, it, you know, think about for a second. It's like, what what are some of the things that you love to do? Like, do do you do you love barbecuing in the summers and going golfing? But you live in the Northeast where it's winter. You know, seven months yeah. out of the year. So, so you love summer, or you just love Thanksgiving, rolling into the Christmas holidays. Like, whatever you love. Like, think about what you love, and then think about, you know, the average. American lives to about 78. So, you know, let's just say today you're 50 years old to keep the math simple. I, I also like simple math. Um, <laughs> you really only have 28 more summers left. You know, so you have 28 more summers left. You have 28 Christmases left. And, you know, I've discovered the older I get, the faster time goes. It, it's interesting. Yeah. So, you know, if you just like, if you have one summer and, and you just kind of are, are too busy, just grinding away, selling real estate and, and you never take time to enjoy the parks. I mean, if you love golfing and it's like you only went golfing once because you were too busy working and now next year you only have 27 summers left. And then that next summer you only went golfing twice. And then the next summer you went once and now you're 65 and it's like, 
geez, I've only went golfing 10 times in the last, you know, 15 years. And you just missed a big chunk of your life, you know, doing the things that you love. And you just completely missed because your head was just down, just grinding away, grinding away. And, uh, and, you know, it's kind of a sad thing. And what, what hit me too, you know, Michael, I'm glad you brought up that question with, with how time is so finite, you know, having a son, he just turned one, our oh, first child. Yeah. Oh. Thanks. It's like, you have really 18 summers with, with your child. And it's like, that's pretty crazy. So, and cause by then they're out of the house, you're not really yeah. going to influence them. I, I heard something, I don't know the exact stat on this, but you have, by the time they're 18, you spend like upwards of 80% of all the time you'll ever spend with them for, for your entire life, wow. their entire life. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. So, so that's, that's a big deal, you know? So I, I hope that people start thinking like, okay, am I just, has folk has work become my number one focus and if it has you might need to change some priorities around and start thinking how can my work serve me rather than me serving my work this is such a powerful conversation oh my gosh it really it really is because it's life-changing right it's sort of like no one really breaks it down we know we go through and we live life right we we run through the paces and it's not until we actually stop and look back and start sort of figuring things out, time is finite, right? And we just don't know, like when, we don't know when the expiration date is. And so time is finite. So if we're actually taking actuary tables, like what you're doing, it still puts it in perspective, like in a big way. It's it's, the first time I heard you sort of say that, I'm like, holy shit, I hate this guy. (laughs) (laughs) It can be it can be depressing, quite honestly. Like yeah. if, you, if you go into it with the wrong mindset, yeah, uh, no, no. I've had to catch myself a little bit, like being like, <laughs> "Wow, that's that's it's heavy, right?" It's it heavy. is heavy. It's heavy, but you know, I I think you know sometimes we got to take a good hard look at what the reality is, and um, and long term, you it shake will serve somebody, us. right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Now, I heard one of your coaching sessions on YouTube, and it was six things every agent should work on. I loved it. What are those six things? Man, there's so many. And, um, and I, I have long lists of what it could be, but yeah, you know, just, just just six six random things. Yeah, The the, the top six. So the first thing is foundation, right? So it's like, if if you were to build a house, what are you going to start with? You're going to start with this, this, this solid foundation on which to build a home. It's the same thing with, with real estate sales. So the first thing that an agent needs to do is develop a strong habit for lead generation. So, so that would be number one, developing a habit of lead generation for an agent that could look like two, three, maybe four hours a day, depending on where your business is of, of lead generation. So first develop that habit. Secondly, work on your skills. Cause you know, when you asked me what was the most, the most really important thing that I learned from my career, yeah. I said consistency, but it's like, if you're just consistently doing the same thing, but you're not thinking also about how can you improve your skills, well, you're probably not going to get the best results that you can. So it's then improving your skills. So you got a habit of prospecting. And then now number two, you're working on your skills. How can you improve? I think number three would be surrounding yourself with the right people, coaches, mentors. I think everyone should have a coach. I still have a coach to this day. I've been out of production now for about three years. I was able to uh, retire from selling real estate when I was 31, but I still have a coach for, for really performance coaching, life coaching. So I think hiring a coach, engaging in a coach, actually putting skin in the game, paying for a coach is very meaningful versus just having a mentor. It's, yep. a, it's a very different relationship. 100%. Um, I have a coach still. Yeah. yeah. See? I assumed you would. You're a very high level guy. So like you you talk to high level CEOs, high level performers in anything, they have a coach. So number three, hire a coach. Number four, like really reflect, always be reflecting and setting goals, like reflecting on where have you come? Where do you want to go? Because it goes back to, we can easily get caught up in the day to day. And before you know it, a few years later, you you look up and you're like, wow, I'm very successful on what I wanted three years ago, but I'm in a completely yes. different place. And I never reflected and, and changed my goals. It's like, like I shared when I first hired that coach, my goal was just to make over six figures a year in real estate. 
had I never looked up, I'd still be making six figures a year in real estate. That's maybe, right. exactly. you know, maybe 200 grand a year in real estate, but I'd still be on that fancy hamster wheel had I not always been reflecting and, and looking up. And then really once you're doing that, um, number five, I would say start putting pieces into your business that's going to give you leverage. If, 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 you're, if you're new to real estate, it's just building those lead generation habits, nailing that. Don't worry about leverage too much. You, you really just got to get to the point where your business is off the ground and, and running. Uh, then you got to think about leverage. So this is a high level podcast. I, I know a lot of luxury agents, high level agents listen to this, but a lot of even them are, are really just in the day to day grind, grind, grind. Sure. So, so what can you, what pieces can you put in to leverage yourself? Maybe it's hiring a showing agent. The first hire would be an assistant. So the first thing you want to do is hire an assistant. You should hire an assistant once you're selling, I'd say around 25 to 35 homes, depending. So hire your first assistant. Next thing to go would be showing buyers houses. So then hire a showing agent to show the houses. Next thing you could hire is, is a buyer's agent, actually someone that completely takes over buyers. Because essentially what you're doing I think if if people are being honest with themselves when, when they when they're reflecting, what they're thinking about is I want to spend more time doing the things that I love. Sure, I like selling real estate. Maybe you even love selling real estate, but at the end of the day, there's probably something that you love more. So they're they're gonna be thinking, what else could I be doing aside from working? And by hiring an assistant, hiring a showing agent, hiring a buyer's agent, what you're doing essentially is buying back your time. And then number six, you know, I would say is figuring out how you're going to develop a strong residual income stream. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have residual income, all you're doing is trading hours for dollars. And as long as you're doing that, you're basically indentured servant. You know, right. it like, really is. It, it really is. You, I, I was listening to something so good yesterday when I was on the, the treadmill and it was basically talking about this very thing it's like because most people live paycheck to paycheck like a lot i I would yeah most agents are commission check to commission check so essentially what you are is an indentured servant you you, you're just trading your your time for the things you have and you never have extra to get your freedom it's it's a very interesting thing when you think about it so I, i would just challenge people it's like if you're going to be working why not carve out some of those working hours to figure out residual income that can be buying real estate. Yeah. That can be, you know, revenue share yeah. through through our great company. But you got to be thinking about that. You know, it's like I I know it's kind of a, a joke among real estate agents in the community. It's like real estate agents don't have retirement parties, and it's not because right. agents don't like the party. Agents love the party. If you've ever been to a real estate conference, you know agents love the party. It's exactly. the industry that loves the party the most. But they don't have retirement parties because no one retires. You know, it's like. They either leave the business to go do something else that has like a retirement plan, you know, 401k that's a little more sure. secure. I might add air quotes if you're listening to this on the podcast. And and or or they just are always like selling a few homes a year until the day they die. It's really unfortunate. So it's you gotta be really mindful about what am I doing to develop enough residual income, whether it's 10, 15, 50 thousand dollars a month, so that when you go to retire, you can, you know, be on that mountaintop living the life of your dreams based on residual income and not, you know, your, your working hours. So, so those are my six on the fly. Those are um, good six, <laughs> top six, way to go. So how did you, how did you actually find the XP? I don't think I ever knew this story. Yeah. You know, so I was in a coaching program, Lars Hedenborg real estate B school, amazing coaching program. And what attracted me to Lars is he's really the, the premier coaching company for helping teams, top producing agents and brokerages create freedom through running a real estate business. Like his, his whole thing is helping teams, top brokerages create freedom. So very ironic. So that's what attracted me to him. I signed up for his coaching, great coaching program. But what I realized was like, it is really tough to create any level of freedom in a real estate business. It's like, yes, it sure is. It, it, you're like a unicorn at that point. And it's really hard to get there. It's a lot of money invested, a lot of stress, a lot of years of working long hours. And near the end of my my one year with that company, my coach, Cliff Freeman, was coaching for Lars. He's one of Lars's coaches. Oh, wow. I, I was telling him how I was thinking about doing expansion with Keller Williams. Like I was like, you know, I'm going to do the expansion model. I just got back from expansion systems orientation in Naples, Florida. And I was like, I'm going to do expansion because I, I wanted more opportunity. I, I was searching for freedom. It was what yeah. I was looking for. 
And what I almost went, the path I almost went down would have been like the opposite of that. And, and he just simply said at the end of the call, just to not make it like a big deal. He's just like, AJ, before you do anything, just, I'm going to send you a video, just watch it. And it was that, it was that easy. Wow. I, wa- I watched it that day and my mind was blown. I was like, this, this wow. is it. This is the opportunity to build true freedom, to truly build a company, to, to build an organization that will eventually serve me, serve my family, allow me to do so much good in the industry, help other agents achieve freedom, help them get off that fancy hamster wheel they're on. I made the decision the next week to join EXP after four years at KW. That was December 2016, January 1, 2017. I was officially onboarded and uh, selling houses at EXP. And, and now, full circle, Lars was one of the first people I told about EXP. I, I, I actually drove down to his office. He, he was about an hour from me. And um, I shared the news with him. And he, he basically laughed, you know, because he, he's really big on being focused. And you, you have sure. to be focused. He's all, he always says, don't chase squirrels. And he thought EXP was another squirrel and he could have been right. You know, who knows? But yeah. he kind of laughed. He kind of laughed. I, I felt kind of bad about myself. I was like, maybe I made the wrong decision. And uh, fast forward four years later, uh, Lars joined. He's in my organization. Oh my God. I love and, um, and he's one of my brothers building this with me. And he has an organization of over 600 people in under a year. Wow. Residual, yeah. Residual income already over 50,000 a month. Crazy. Um, and now he's a huge advocate for EXP because like he had the premier coaching or still has the premier coaching yeah. company for helping agents create freedom. He was doing seven figures a year on that coaching business. And, wow. and once he, he followed my journey on social media and it hit him when he saw a post of mine that said, my real estate team just closed. This was last fall, just closed yeah. 1120 houses, whatever it was. He saw an Insta story. And he was like, he's like, wow, AJ just isn't at EXP building revenue share, whatever that is. AJ legitimately has a real estate team selling over a thousand homes a year. It's he's insane. like, I think I may have missed something. So at that point he was open-minded. And then it was actually one of my mutual friends, John Mykesh, um, who I had sponsored EXP, yes. independent broker owner that came over. He called Lars the very next week. So it was just perfect timing. So Lars had just seen my post, had <laughs> messaged me like, congratulations, that's amazing. But he was turning on it. Yeah. John reached out at the right time. And Lars made the decision that day to join. Like that week, Lars was official with EXP, had a team at KW, Amazing. sold his team, brought over his coaching company to EXP, basically. And now now John's on the verge of breaking uh, the one-year record for all of the EXP agents. He'll, it looks like he's going to beat Brent Gove's uh, one-year oh record God. of, of 868 agents in one year. Yeah, he's he's almost there. He's about to break 800. He's got about a month and a half to go. So we'll see. Wow, that's crazy. That's an incredible yeah. story. That's yeah. a really incredible story, you know? And you know what I love about you, AJ, is that you share so much of yourself to really become an example for others and an inspiration for others. And I, I love that quality about you. And, you know, you um, you shared over the last time we were in, we were in Cabo together a few months ago. And we were at a mastermind and there was uh, about 700 people there and you were on the stage and you shared a very intimate thing. And, you know, you had sort of said that the video that you shared, only seven people in your family had seen it before. And here you are showing it to 700 people. And I, uh, you know, and it moved me so much. And would you just mind telling the story of what that was? Because I was, it was so inspirational to me and I know it will be for many. Yeah. Thanks for asking about that. So so yeah, so you know, I, I mentioned already, I, I grew up probably lower middle class. I would say, you know, all the needs were met, but there, there were some struggles growing up. You know, single mom, whatnot, and and I always had a dream one day to be able to help my mom out. You know, it was like, you know, she she was able to help me out, help raise me into the man I am. I want to be able to help her when I'm able to. So, so I, I definitely was helping her for a while. You know, paying for her cell phone things like that, and then. When I finally got the opportunity, it was like, you know what? I, I think I am at the point now where I can actually buy her a house. And, you know, she's still struggling financially, really has her whole life for the most part. So Abby and I, my wife, made the decision like, all right, we're going to do it this summer. So we presented it to my mom and she's like, okay, that sounds good. Let's let's do it. Because she had really been wanting to move for some years. And yeah. we went out looking at houses and, you know, we found uh, one that she liked. So we put the offer in. She, she thought it was going to be contingent on financing. So, yeah. so that's what, that was what she was thinking the whole time. So she thought the whole time we had to pass the appraisal, had to get the inspection, 
yeah. and uh, and all these things. And the whole time she's like, you know, just too good to be true. You know, never thought that this would happen to her. Very kind of you know, a little negative about the whole experience. Like not a very positive outlook on something yeah. good actually happening. Yeah. And uh, so, so the whole time she's just like, all right, we passed the inspection, like big weight off the shoulder. So happy we passed the inspection. And then we go to do a walk through the house because Abby hadn't seen it at this point yet. So we went by with, with Abby and my son, Breck, who was just uh, like three months at the time. Yeah. And we're walking through the house and she's giving uh, Abby a tour. So we're actually recording the whole thing because she's giving Abby a tour. So it's no big deal that we're actually recording it. She didn't yeah. think it was a big deal. And we're standing in the living room at the end of the uh, the tour and I was like you know mom I, I don't think we're going to be able to close you know October or J September 20th whatever the initial close right. date was and she's like are you serious like you can just tell in her face she got she was so disappointed she's like I think she might have even said or was about to say like I knew it like I knew it wasn't going to work out but then I reached in my pocket and handed her keys and she just went crazy with crying and, and all that and the reason I was able to do that i uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons of why I was able to do that, you know, you know, been truly blessed in, in my life and, and just, you know, the opportunities and, and the work ethic and all the long hours and all the sweat and tears yeah. and all that has culm culminated into that, that moment. But without EXP Realty, that would have not happened possibly my entire life or her, her entire life. You know, she's in her mid 60s, yeah. poor health. And it, it was because of EXP's stock program. It wasn't even the revenue share. Like the revenue share, I'm set for life because of revenue share. But it was because of the Icon Agent stock I got in 2017. That $16,000 in stock that I got turned new into a couple hundred thousand. And, and I sold those shares of stock. And that's what paid for her house. I, I, I wish I didn't sell them because they're now up in value. Right. <laughs> but I'm still happy I sold them because at the time, I didn't have that much cash just to buy yeah. a house if I didn't sell the stock. And, and that moment was, was priceless. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's been a fun journey. So grateful for all the leadership at, at EXP for you, Michael, for everything that you do for the company, for the vision that Glenn had. And, you know, we just have some really amazing people at this company doing a really amazing things with big hearts. You know, we we're doing things first and foremost for, for ourselves and our families, you know, it's like put the oxygen mask on first. They tell That's you on right. the plane. That's right. But after, after that, after your cup is full, it just starts overflowing. And, and that's when we're able to be impacting other people's lives. Like I was able to do for my mom. So it I'm was just grateful. An amazing story. You know, it was, you, you had everyone in tears. <laughs> that's sort of like similar to now. I have one final question for you in your book of life, AJ, what's this chapter called? Yeah. Well, what a challenging and interesting question at the same time. So Luckily, you you prepped me with that question, so I had a moment to think about it. Because otherwise, you would have caught me speechless. <laughs> that's just such a cool question that I've never thought about, and and I, I just pictured a very simple chapter title, and and that was just next level. For for yes. me, I kind of shared that you know struggling with dreaming again. You, you reach you know you reach a point. I think on, on your journey in life, where you, where you you've had this dream, and then you achieve that dream, and it's like oh shoot, I gotta start dreaming again. Again, yeah. I got to adjust to this new way of life. And uh, I think that's where we're at as a family. It's we're at this next level in income, this next level of impact, this next level of responsibility and, and fun and lifestyle that we get to enjoy. And, and for us, it's, it's truly taking a step back again, casting that vision into the future for what the next 10, 20 years are going to look like. So it's just this next level of life. It's new level financially, new level of abundance, new level of fun. So, so I would just simply title it next level. I love that. AJ, you are such an inspiration, my brother. You really, really are. You're such an amazing human being. And what you've done for your family, I mean, you know, your, your wife that believed in you also so much and the sacrifices that she did also, and the fact that you've created this amazing unit and you have that beautiful son now and you just keep giving back to others. It's it's an honor to know you, to call you a friend, to really have you in my life. And how you inspire others is extraordinary. And this conversation was amazing. And I thank you for it. 
Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Again, grateful to know you. It's it's been fun starting this new relationship over the last year or so. Just um, excited for the future and, and growing in friendship. And I know we're gonna have tons of fun memories to come. So look it really to will be. It's amazing. And yeah. thank you for all of you for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Thanks very much. <laughs>